game edition of the PHNX D-backs podcast 2024. My name is Derek Montia. Damon, don't you dare let that music go anywhere. I need that music in my life. I need it. I need the new theme song of my life. Uh, this is our win song, y'all. Let's go. Of course, I am occasionally known as the mayor of PHNX, and I am alone here tonight. My best friend in the world, uh, I guess. That's kind of sad to say that. But Jesse Friedman, a.k.a. my vice mayor, and you're a thunderstick, still at Chase Field getting us all sorts of valuable information from Tori Lovolo's post-game press conference and from the clubhouse after tonight's huge win. Um, But I am not alone. Of course, tonight, I got my guy, the one and only Damon Dog, the people's producer, joining me uh, just so that I don't have to sit here and talk to myself. Damon, put yourself up on screen immediately. I I need the people to see your smiling face over there, pal. He's trying to get himself ready. All right, just get, get yourself up there. Um, and you're, you, you, sir, you, sir, How are, you I know, doing? are very excited about, oh, uh, about the things that we saw tonight. How of can course, you not be excited? I don't know. I don't know how you can be excited. What a way to start this season. If there was any doubt in your head that the snakes were indeed alive, I think that this win tonight put it all to rest. Of course, the Diamondbacks, I guess you could say make a statement here by crushing the Colorado Rockies by a score of 16 to one. But of course, uh, we we welcome you into the PHNXD back show presented by Factor Meal Kits. Head to factormealkits.com slash PHNXD backs 50 and use code PHNXD backs 50 to get 50% off. And Desert Financial Credit Union, Arizona's number one credit union named by Forbes. Uh, the snakes are in fact alive, folks. Uh, what an opening day. I don't think any one of us could have asked for more uh, out of today's game. Uh, maybe this guy, he, he wanted a Zach Gallon perfect game, which of course, he's asking for too much, and he always does. But um, I, I will say this, that I have to give credit where credit is due. Our brand new theme song is it was, in fact, brought to you by the People's Producer when we were kicking around ideas. Uh, this song was his idea, and uh, I think I think everybody loves the song. I think everybody loves the song, including Gabby Moreno loves the song. Um, do you have do we have that? Clip? We're about yeah. to have it. We're about to have it. Let's get Gabby up there. We'll have Gabby in here in a second. Uh, Gabby uh, and the rest of the Arizona Diamondbacks, of course, um, they they are riding high tonight after tonight's big win. Uh, a, a historic inning, in fact, in the third inning. But like I said, here's Gabby um, enjoying our new theme song. Can we get that up there? We are, we are back, folks. We are back. Uh, the offense absolutely exploded tonight for the Arizona Diamondbacks, as you saw, scoring uh, what uh, came to be a 14-run inning, which was a franchise record on 13 hits, which was also a franchise record. Uh, these Diamondbacks uh, like are, are, are incredible. I, I don't know what else to say about what we saw tonight. Of course, Lourdes Gurriel got things kicked off with a home run early. It felt like right away. There was a lot of energy in the ballpark. The just everything. Like I, the, the only thing I didn't like, the only thing I'm going to criticize is there was no pomp and circumstance for the unveiling of the Arizona diamondbacks, 2023 national uh, league title the uh, there is a you know a, a brand new 23 out there in the outfield and I guess it just got put up at some point I don't know when Jesse didn't know when there was no curtain uh, unveiling there was nothing like that and maybe that's something they didn't want to celebrate I guess I I don't know they they are going to have a day later this year where they're going to give out their uh, their national league championship rings and they're going to have commemorative rings for for all the fans or not all the fans in attendance but a number of fans in attendance but uh damon am i wrong that i 
didn't get that even though it's just a number up there on the wall like some sort of unveiling of that can you repeat it i'm sorry me and kyle were having a conversation we're, we're no, not, I, we're not I, alone I like tonight. multitasking when i'm sitting here drinking a beer and screaming about the diamondbacks being back baby Cheers, but brother golden no, lager here we go the best yeah, gold lager, baseball pure baseball beer uh basically what i was saying was they did not do any kind of unveiling ceremony for the for for the national league title seems like a kind of a miss but it also but seems... maybe but maybe they're trying to like send a message like this is this year we're going for it all like it's not about getting second place i mean doesn't that fire you up Derek? did yeah. they not show that tonight they, 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 they showed, did they show said, that we're tonight. the best team in the sport they did show that tonight uh they did definitely send a message to the rest of major league baseball i don't know if it's a statement win against the colorado rockies because it's the colorado rockies right but um 16 runs in a game against any major league baseball team is incredibly impressive in fact uh they weren't the only ones that were hot tonight the coyotes which some of you might be over there watching the coyote show right now uh the coyotes and the diamondbacks combined tonight to score 24 times yo talkie's never been more bad let's go never ever. let's go and of course uh it's fun because both of these teams are doing it with the young guys of course when you take a look at the box score the diamondbacks really just spread it all around tonight it was a pretty Solid effort from uh, with multiple hits from Cattell Marte, Lourdes Gurriel Jr., Christian Walker, Gabby Moreno, uh, Ejuenio Suarez, who also had an incredible defensive play at third base that immediately, immediately, immediately made me excited for the fact that that man is going to be playing the hot corner uh, most nights for this team. Of course, we also had Blaze Alexander get a two-hit night. Uh, that's our guy, so that was great to see. Alec Thomas smoked the ball. He had a two-hit night. And Jerry P, two-hit night. So the, the Diamondbacks really, uh, really spread around. The only, the only guy tonight that did not get a hit was uh, Jake McCarthy and Corbin Carroll. And that's not terrible. Like, that's not the worst thing in the world. How insane is that? That it's How crazy that Corbin is that? Carroll's the only one. Can yeah. I can I say something? Shout out my boy Cameron. He had a bet that he was riding, and uh it was Diamondbacks money line and Corbin Carroll to get one hit. That's a that's a tough beat there. That is a tough beat. You, you hate to that see is that. A one. That's a tough beat. That is a tough like, beat. Like 16 runs and the best player on the team. Yeah. He's over. Yeah, Jacob's right. Um, honestly, I where is Jesse Jr.? I would would uh, if someone could. I think I need I need my snake out here. But um, Zach Gallon tonight was exactly what he thought we thought he would be. Uh, his line isn't you know isn't going to blow you away. But honestly, Jesse said something very poignant, and that was the fact that perhaps oh we got a swear jar coming in. Holy cow, we got all sorts of stuff. Uh, perhaps they should have just hold on, hold on, hold on. I can't. There we go. All right, now give it to me. All right, there we go. Uh, they might have well, might as well just pulled Zach Gallon after the fourth inning. I mean, with the way that the Diamondbacks did what they did there in the fourth, uh, just absolutely exploding. Gallon didn't even need to come back out, and it wasn't that crazy of a suggestion. You know, Zach Gallon, of course, uh, still had that short off season. We know that you know there's no reason to run him out there. The bullpen uh, was able to lock things down and and keep it essentially the same score gallon did give up one run he gave up three hits total uh two walks three strikeouts not a great night in striking guys out but he didn't really need to right i mean once this game became what it became in the third inning what what you you just i think both teams just wanted to get it over with the diamondbacks scored 14 runs in the third inning uh i think Susie from the dnvr show was ready to just wrap it up and and go home at that point but um yeah the game kind of went fast after that uh, again some good defensive plays by alec thomas and gino out there but man this was just an absolutely perfect win to start the season if you were worried at all about if the diamondbacks were gonna you know come in here taking the colorado rockies uh you know lightly they did not. In fact, they whooped that ass. And it was uh, a, a fun night to be out there at the ballpark watching baseball. Uh, it was a sellout. I think that they said uh, 49,011 uh, in attendance. So just an incredible night all around. Uh, it was it was beautiful opening night ceremonies. Like you just couldn't ask for anything better. The weather was perfect. Uh, and and the score is, is even more perfect. But uh, again, Zach Gallen, exactly what we needed uh, tonight. And, uh, of course, we also have the fact that Damon over here might be a witch. 
I'm just saying. I don't I don't typically people like people are throw, talking about it. People that's the word on the street. Uh people have just rumored that Damon might in fact be a witch before today's game. I gave uh a parlay that I thought was going to be a good parlay, didn't hit. Totally okay with it. I will 100% take my parlay losing for a 16 to 1 win any single and, night. And who and who was the one that questioned you? You questioned me taking the under on my mm. parlay and I mean this is actually what you had to say. Let's just hear it from you earlier on the base path. And I think we're going to get that stolen base from Corbin Carroll. That seems like a no doubter to me. The one, the one that Damon, I don't agree with is the total runs. I went under nine. I went at eight and a half. Cause I think Zach Gallon's very good. I think he's going to limit oh, I runs think Zach here. Gallen's throwing a perfect game. And I think the diamondbacks are scoring 20 runs. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's fair. That's way more realistic than what yeah, I was thinking. Way more for realistic. Sure. But I went with under on that one. You can do what you want over there um it turned out maybe it was way more realistic how crazy is that yeah yeah like those words that came out of my mouth that's uh people are talking about me knowing ball yeah that's, that's just been a conversation yeah i mean when there was a there was a moment damon when the score was 16 to 1 that i was like this son of a bitch it's gonna actually be 20 there's go they're going to score 20 runs it's just incredible to me but yeah sadly perfect game never on the table really but 20 runs like it felt like maybe 30 was realistic I mean they, they're not gonna they're not gonna set the the, the over under it at like 16 ever you know what I mean so it's like you were in the clear never by quite a bit by quite a bit um but speaking of guys that were in the clear Lourdes Gurriel if there was any doubt that the Diamondbacks should have brought him back I think on opening night uh he single-handedly uh put any of that doubt again to rest Diamondbacks uh of course he is our king snake tonight with the uh, with with his performance. Loris Gurriel goes three for five, one home run, five RBI, three runs scored. In fact, Lourdes Gurriel's five RBI tonight are the most by an Arizona Diamondback on opening day ever. Previous most uh, was also against the Rockies on March 29th, 2018 by Jake Lamb. Jake Lamb. Missed that guy. Uh, but not really, not with, not with what the way that this talking could, about. Yeah, no, I mean, that's what do you a crazy mean? thing to even say, right? That, that was insane. Well, I don't mean I miss him like on the team. I just, you know? I don't miss him at all. Yeah, did you it. see Gino's hair tonight? Yeah. You miss Jake nah. Lamb? Did you, did you see, see that Gino's play Gino? Way? Yeah. The Gino's yeah, hair is it. gorgeous. Yeah. It's, uh, don't even get me started. This was just, there's, there's very few things to pick apart here. I mean. Kyle Freeland might have been our king snake with the way that he performed for the Colorado Rockies tonight. Uh, we kind of joked earlier that this was going to be the most lopsided uh, start or lopsided pitching matchup of opening day. And it, it, in fact, absolutely was the most lopsided pitching matchup on opening day with the Diamondbacks having the biggest win by a score of 16 to one. I won't lie earlier when I saw what the Dodgers were doing, I was a little worried, Damon. Did you I see, was a little worried. Do you remember when I told you earlier that the Diamondbacks had the best odds to score the most runs in baseball today? You, you did say that. You I mean, Vegas that. knew. Yeah. Like, Vegas I, knew. They just knew Kyle Freeland was trash, I guess. Well, I mean, this Diamondbacks lineup was very, very good. Let's be honest. Let's, you got to give them credit. And, you know, coming into this game, you would not have thought that the Diamondbacks would have done what they did tonight with Corbin Carroll not getting a hit, but everybody else contributed. Uh, and of course, Corbin still contributed. He walked twice, so it's not like he wasn't on the base path uh, doing what he does. But of course, you know, this was just a night where this team came together uh, and really put it to the Rockies. I think that there's something to be said about obviously the confidence that this team gained from last year's you know, postseason run, right? There comes to be a point where you really do start believing because you are beating the teams you're not supposed to in the highest stakes, you know, that you're not supposed to, that you, you know, that that you can beat anyone, right? Now you come into this season, you you're fresh off of adding all of the pieces that you added. You have one last incredible piece added right before opening day in Jordan Montgomery, which uh, we're still not allowed to talk about in, in to Tory or or my case until it's official. So that's still kind of weird because we just got to we have to throw him hypotheticals like let's just say you guys got Jordan Montgomery wink. Uh, how would you feel about this starting rotation? Right. And now you got to feel pretty good. I think the team feels good. You you're, you come in already confident. You already come in believing, you know, in yourself and in, in your teammates. But man, tonight was just uh, one of those uh, nights where this team kind of hit 
the Rockies to death. Like they just kept getting those hits. I mean, the Diamondbacks, they uh, have 18 hits on the night. Those uh, the 13 hits in, in the third inning, again, like I said, was uh, a franchise record. And they just they just kept doing it. Like it it just got to a point where I'm not gonna say it was boring to watch it anymore, but it just it felt like it was never gonna end. It felt like the Diamondbacks were never gonna register an out and that they were just gonna keep putting runs up on the board in that in that inning. It was one of the most incredible things I've ever seen any incarnation of this franchise do. I've never seen a night where I literally got bored watching them score runs because of how many runs they were scoring, right? I, I almost felt like I was back to, you know, the 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 four home run night against the Dodgers where in that moment, it didn't feel like the Diamondbacks were going to stop hitting home runs. This night was a night where it didn't feel, it felt like they weren't going to stop hitting the ball. It just, it felt effortless for them. Uh, and I mean, what a great way to start the season, especially when, you know, you're coming off of a year where you advanced, you you move the ball essentially so much as a franchise and you feel like you are in such a better position. Uh, you got a lot of great pieces added and, uh, you know, you just come out on night one and, and start things off like this. Like, you know, we asked Tori before the game if if he felt like, you know, this is, uh, you know, if opening day was more important than any other day. Right. And and he was honest. He would said, I'd like to feel like it's not because it's just one of 162 games we play. But it is there. It sets a tone for the season. And this is uh, a conversation Jesse and I had. But this is a statement game. It's a statement win. It's not that it's against a big opponent. It's not like opening night it was against the Dodgers and you, and you put it to them like this. But to come out on your first night of the regular season and to to essentially dismantle your opponent the way that they did against the Rockies it sets the tone for the season. That's something I think Jesse said earlier that sometimes the season tends to go kind of in a way that mimics what opening day is like. If that's the case, hold on to your goddamn butts because this is going to be one hell of a ride in 2024. Oh, Damon. This team just has no holes. None. And uh, we actually actually have some sound from Tori Lavolo on that third inning earlier. Yeah, um, I, I, I said it three or four times. I've never seen anything like this, and, and it just kept going. It just kept happening, and um, like I said, it was just real good approaches to the baseball, and nobody's trying to hit the ball out of the ballpark. They're just trying to, trying to do what they do best and stay inside of the baseball and just use an all-field approach and backspin it. And, yeah, many times – I said it probably four or five times in, in, in that inning, and I was just proud of the guys. They kept, they kept going. They kept getting after it. Now, one thing we have said about this team at times is that, like, they almost do need to keep their foot on the pedal. And I see some of your comments because you guys are with me. Nicholas said, honestly, though, Derek, I started to actually feel bad for the Rockies there. Like, yeah, these are human beings out there. And, like, you don't really want necessarily to to feel bad for an opponent. But when, when the Diamondbacks just couldn't stop hitting the ball, there was a moment where you were like, Yikes, you know, uh, of course, known baseball GM Elise was laughing like a maniac in her living room after run number 10 scored. And that's not that's not surprising to me at all. But uh, of course, tonight would be a very, very good night to get in on prize picks because you could have just done more than for everything when it came to a lot of stats for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Of course, uh, baseball season is here and whether it's baseball season or basketball season with the tournament going on and the fight for playoff home court, there's no shortage of high stakes moments this time of year in sports. So get in on the excitement with prize picks America's number one fantasy sports app where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash prize picks is really simple to play you can make your picks and submit your entry in less than 60 seconds quick withdrawals easy gameplay and enormous selection of players and stat types are what make makes prize picks the number one daily fantasy sports app go to prizepickscom slash phnx and use code phnx for a first deposit match up to 100 dollars. that's prizepickscom slash phnx and use code phnx pick more pick less it's that easy also, of course, like I've been discussing, I am terrible at taking care of myself. You guys know I got a new dog. 
I take care of that dog way better than I take care of myself. I'm going to tell you that right now. But Factor Meal Kits definitely help me take better care of myself. Eating better is easy with Factor's delicious ready-to-eat meals. Uh, two minutes, all it takes to heat it up. They're never frozen. They're always fresh. You can fuel up fast with Factor's restaurant-quality meals that are ready to heat and eat wherever you are. And that's exactly what I need. Uh, there might not be places for me uh, to necessarily. I might not have money to spend at the ballpark every night, but there are microwaves there. And of course, I can heat up that food. No prep, no mess meals. Factor meals are ready to heat and eat. So there's no prepping, cooking, or cleanup needed. And right now you head to factormeals.com slash phnxdbacks50 and use that code phnxdbacks50 to get 50% off. That's code phnxdbacks50 at factormeals.com slash phnxdbacks50 to get 50% off. Uh, thank all of you guys for being here in the PHNX Sports YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure to do so now. Sign up for notifications. That way you don't miss whenever we go live. And, of course, if you're listening, uh, well, drop us a like. Uh, drop me a like. Jesse's not here tonight. These likes are all for me. I'm taking credit for all of them. These all, they're, Gabby, some are for Damon. Gabby I'm gets share no credit. Damon. Gabby's with it. We're going to get Gabby dancing to the theme song here again. Before I think the they're Gabby's over. likes. Let's yeah, be real. They are Gabby's likes. Yeah, drop a like for Gabby. Uh, dancing uh, like like the adorable man he is, and of course for his wonderful production tonight. Let's not forget because I don't think I brought Gabby up tonight. Gabriel Moreno also went uh, two for five with three RBI, two runs scored, five runs scored total by that man. Of course, or contributing at least to the to the total. So, uh, just a great overall night for this team. I cannot get over all the things that they did, all the wonderful stuff they did. Of course, uh, right now, let's take a look at uh, the count, which is what we're calling our new box score recap every week on this show or every post game on this show. Um, but, of course, these numbers, they're, they're, they're kind of something tonight. Of course, we know that the Arizona Diamondbacks put up those 16 runs to the Colorado Rockies, one run, 18 hits uh, to the four hits. This is the impressive factor here, Damon. The Diamondbacks went 12 for 15 with runners in scoring position. Uh, meanwhile, the Rockies one for six. Uh, but 12 for 15, I don't know if I've ever seen the Diamondbacks uh, do this. That was like I, what they were doing in the like playoffs this. against the Dodgers. Mm -hmm. Like, it's it's pretty incredible. I mean, it feels like that they're they really feel like they're on a mission after watching that game. I, yeah. I, I don't know if you feel the same way, but like, there's just no way in my mind that they're not thinking about we want to be the best. Like it's not about reaching the playoffs like it was last year. Like they, this team has a real mentality and Tori Lavolo is the type of manager that seems like he really has them going in the direction that they need to be going in. Yeah, I, I agree completely. Even with this offensive output, the Diamondbacks only had the one home run tonight from Lourdes and uh, the Diamondbacks actually struck out more than the Colorado Rockies. Again, Zach Gallon only had the three strikeouts, but None of that matters. None of that matters when you're putting up 16 runs and when you're going 12 for 15 with runners in scoring position. I think that uh, Carlos is absolutely right. I think that's something that I heard from several people tonight. Like, save it for later? What are we doing here? Like, do we really need to do all of this in one? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Uh, because, you know, like you said, Jerry P talked in the Snakes Alive documentary, which they showed at Chase Field tonight, and it was electric by the way, uh, they, you know, they, he talked about taking, you know, the, the, the attitude of the Dodgers personally. Right. And I mean, there is a point where it felt like the diamondbacks turned it on. And, uh, again, something they talked about in that documentary was the fact that they didn't care that they were being doubted anymore. They just wanted to go out and prove people wrong. Uh, I think Tori Lavello is the right manager to foster that mentality like when the players start feeling that way and as a group they start coming together uh because they want to shut people up and prove people wrong you know that's that's the kind of motivation i think that tory can tap into and i don't i don't know if exploit is the right word but really utilize to get the team to real to, to see their full potential right something that's stuck in my head, Damon, ever since Eduardo Rodriguez said it in his opening press conference was how when he used to pitch for the Boston Red Sox, they had to look over at the rivalry with the Yankees and they had to think like, that's just some guy wearing a different, that's just some guy. Like, it's just some guy, right? And I mean, it's not to say those guys that are just some guys aren't very good baseball players, but you can also have the attitude that tonight you're not going to be a good baseball player against me. And that's something that was very evident 
tonight against the Colorado Rockies. The Diamondbacks, much like when Gabby said, you know, other teams are going to want to try to score, but he's not going to let them. Like the Diamondbacks, you know, they're they're just locked in, you know, and they are kind of ruthless right now, and it's the exact kind of mentality they need to have. I, I know I raised some questions like early on about the Snakes Alive thing, like is it a little bit of loser talk? But I think throughout the the series, like when I was watching it, like they they made pretty clear what their intentions were, and like it, like Jesse has been saying, it really was remarkable. But I think that these guys are like they are as locked in as you can possibly be. They, I, I, they I've never are. been more confident in a Diamondbacks team, like in my adult life at least, that like they're they they're gonna be a playoff team. Like never in my life. I mean, it's it's hard to imagine that they're not going to be, but it also feels like me of all people is telling you that that's a little bit much on night one, pal. But I get what you're saying. Like, it's hard to look at this team and look at what they've done recently. Oh, oh I'm overreacting. Oh, you're da- overreacting. Damon overreacts yeah. about something. Oh, you're the one overreacting. But no, I mean, honestly, yeah, I get what you're saying. Like, you you get that excited about this after one game, and it's easy to because this team isn't a different team from last year. This team isn't different from what they did during the postseason. They did lose some pieces, and some of those pieces were very vital to their success. That's something that this documentary very much illustrates when it comes to, like, Evan Longoria and his role in getting the Diamondbacks to where they got and how important he was in some of those games, right? But you can't help but take a look at the upgrades that they have and already know that this is a better team on paper than they were. Now we got a chance to see it all come together tonight defensively offensively this team was absolutely dialed in in every possible way that's how that's that's how you can look at it now you could also say it's against Colorado Rockies and they lost I believe 100 games last year so I don't know how much stock you want to put in uh, on them doing it for one game against the Rockies but I will say that if the Diamondbacks go and sweep this series against the Rockies and do what they did tonight uh, like for for three more games Maybe not, maybe not even as badly as they beat them tonight, but just do what they do, what they did tonight for three more games. It's hard at that point to not start looking at this team like an absolute monster uh, that the rest of Major League Baseball is going to have to deal with. Um, well, we all is is I don't did someone is Jesse dead? Did he die? Jesse was kidnapped. I because see, I'm terrified. But well, because... I actually have something that we can talk about, Derek. What's that? I, we I can't believe we haven't gotten to this already. JP Geraldo Perdomo's exit velocity. <laughs> okay. Why is this guy starting again? Oh, that's right. Because okay. he starts every goddamn rally that this he team really has every single one of them. All he does is get on base for the table setters. Oh, but he hit it 85 miles per hour. It was a soft line drive. I, I actually could not care less. He's the nine hole. He gets on base. He's a good defender. Like do not touch my Jerry P. How dare you? Anybody that said that he should not be starting, you should be ashamed of yourself. I don't. I don't think anybody said that they they shouldn't be starting. But it does shame. J- it, shame. Yeah, go, dude. You're shaming. You shame. Shame. You shame. Shame. Um, but no, I was gonna say. Uh, I think when it comes to Jerry, it was just a matter of bl- the rise of Blaze Alexander, which today was a big focal point. That everybody was talking about Blaze. Uh, it was. It was a wonderful day. You know, we got the video that the Diamondbacks put out of Tori telling Blaze the news, not to mention the fact that I got a wonderful chance to embrace him uh, before his first uh, major league professional game. I don't know why uh, we hugged, but we just hugged. That's we're just, we're just, we're just dudes like that. But uh, Blaze is, uh, he's an incredible person, man. And I mean, he's very excited to play this game. You can tell his enthusiasm is infectious. And that was another thing that was brought up to Tori today that they kind of, keep having this injection of life from these young players at times. And sometimes the guys, you know, don't have the same success as like a Corbin Carroll, but it feels like every time a young player comes up, they, they find a way to contribute to the team, to the team. And they find a way to just be a a bit of a spark, you know, at times for this team. But I mean, I I don't know. I I think that the, the main thing here is that blaze Alexander had one of the best spring training you know, uh, I guess spring training periods that we've seen from from a young man like this. And Tori talked today about how a big part of the reason why they decided to to go with Blaze on the forty man roster and and even for him to be on the opening day roster and in the starting lineup 
was because early on he was, you know, he was doing some things that Tory didn't like. And, and, you know, Tory coached him on it and he basically, you know, kind of corrected himself. He, he did what Tory, you know, he saw, Tory saw in him, you know, that maturity to understand what Tory was telling him. I think he said like he pimped a double and like in spring training. And yeah, that does sound kind of a bit much, right? But of course, when you hit the ball as hard as Blaze Alexander does, does sometimes you just want to pimp everything, you know, it makes a lot of sense. Um, but the way that he could be coached, the way that he could understand what Tory was telling him, take it into consideration and immediately like, you know, understand, you know, the, the, the philosophy there uh, really impressed Tory. And I think that you mix that with the spring he had and the fact that he, he hit 400 essentially and was one of the best hitters in all of Major League Baseball in spring training. It was hard not to go with him. And again, the kid went out there and, and he had himself a great night. He went two for five in the DH with an RBI in his first, ba in his first Major League Baseball game. Um, you know, he, he, did, he, he did have an embarrassing moment where he lost track of how many balls there was and he threw his bat aside after three balls and tried to take his base. Um, but... He came back and smoked the ball after that, and it made us all forget everything about that. So I, I think, though, going back to everything Damon was saying, Perdomo is just different. Perdomo is this catalyst at times for this team. Perdomo is the one that gets things going. And in some cases, he's just the guy that kind of, like, will have that lengthy at bat or take that walk. Or, I mean, in some cases, you know, obviously it's it's not always done you know, with, with the hits, but there's just something about Geraldo Perdomo always being in the mix for, you know, uh, for, for the offense to, it's a to lot get of intangibles, isn't it? I mean, like it's, it's not really stuff that shows up in the box score all the right. time, but like when the, when Gabby calls a needs to talk to his pitcher, who's there every single time the dude last year was 23 years old and he's, he's in every single one of those. He's more like attentive to that stuff than Nick Ahmed was, uh, who was a 10 year veteran. Like that's just the kind of stuff that he he does on a regular basis, and I I think that it it goes unspoken for a lot of the time. Uh, another great thing, by the way, I think that there's a uh, comment here about Blaze handing out gum, D backs gum inventory to the kids. Um, Blaze is awesome. He said at Salt River, my son asked him for gum, and he said, "Yeah, we have lots of gum." And then Blaze is just handing out D backs gum inventory to the children uh, because gum is for the kids. That's that's what that's what the thought process is. I know. Uh, there was like Tommy Henry was helping a dad get a ball for, you know, his son and stuff. There's just a lot of stuff like that tonight. You saw Corbin Carroll signing a million autographs. You saw these guys out there uh, really interacting with the fans and just being excited to play baseball, being excited to be around each other. And honestly, a little of that, a little of that excitement, I think, was being at Chase Field uh, because Chase Field was electric tonight. Not only was the atmosphere electric, like we said, the, the players just they they can't think enough about or they can't they can't express enough how excited they get about seeing a full house like they saw tonight but uh there is something absolutely electric about the new light show and we have a little uh little clip of that and what exactly it looked like when the diamondbacks were doing the intros tonight <laughs> I mean, this is fucking electric, man. I, and, and when I was looking back over this, it kind of looked like the field at times with the light show looked like it was like a, like a, a time lapse or something of the sort. Like this, the sound system is so loud. It is such a vibe in this place. But like the lights, man, I can't tell you how much I love the lights. If you go back and watch old episodes of this show, that was, that was one of the things that I used to get the most mad about because LED lights didn't seem like that big of a thing to do, right? And like, and I knew, I knew seeing at other ballparks and stuff that it would be electric in Chase Field, mostly because of the, the you know, the, the airplane hangar nature of it, right? Like the, 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 the fact that the uh, Chase Field can kind of be so, I guess dark and uh, you know, like I just knew, I knew those lights would go, would pop off in there. And man, it's a completely different environment. The franchise, the the front office, they're so happy with with just at the way everything looks and the and the step that they took. They they talked quite a bit about you know going around in the playoffs and playing at these opposing ballparks and seeing a lot of the stuff that the opposing teams had. 
and wanting that for them. And that's how we felt. We were watching a lot of these teams do this stuff in the playoffs. And we wanted to, we wanted to know how it felt to have that light show. We wanted to know how it felt to have certain things. And I mean, the, the diamondbacks are really taking steps in the right direction to provide a more fun experience for fans. But I think also, um, like do more for the players, you know, like you, 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 like you think of the player amenities being the clubhouse and food that they have and stuff like that. The players love the light show just as much, if not more than even some of us, the players love the sound system and everything that they got going in our, in there and the party atmosphere and everything, uh, you know, just as much as we do. But the thing they love the most is seeing so many diamondbacks fans in the stands. And that's something that, you know, again, it, I guess maybe because it's new, I guess maybe because it's something that we haven't had a chance to have a whole lot of, you know, it's, it's something they still talk about, but like, man, if we can fill that building up, I think uh, groundhog mama said it in the, in the chat, but like, we get to do this tomorrow. We get to go out there and do this tomorrow. And we get to do this for 80 more games. So we got to keep this vibe up because I really do feel like they provided a better atmosphere for us. I saw Patrick's comment, Patrick Lyons. You absolutely. Uh, I'm already giving Patrick you motherfucking lions. Patrick baby. motherfucking lions. I can't wait this is Patty to see Plans you for the yoffs again. For the fucking yoffs. He will uh, return. Yeah, he will return. I, I'm already letting you have Jesse's bed or whatever, wherever you need to stay. Don't worry about. It. I'll see you in October. You beautiful I'll handsome also, man. I'll also allow you to sleep at Jesse's place. Thank you. Yeah, I mean that's Dame, big of us, Derek. That's I, really big of us. Look, the, it's the sacrifices we make for this show and for Patty Plantains, but I'll be happy to do it. I will be happy to do it. Um, I think we also have some video here from Zach Gallen in the clubhouse. Do we got that? Uh, yeah, the offense is great. Um, I joked at one point. I was like. Um, I said, hey, I want to play. Like, I'm sitting on the side. Like, I want to. Um, so, yeah, I mean, obviously, that's that's makes uh, my job, our, our job as pitchers, a lot easier when they can go out there and, and give you, um, you know, that much support. I think next time I'd rather them just do it in, like, 10 minutes. Like, score it in, like, 10 minutes. That way I can go out there. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, those guys, they came ready to play. Um, and that's for sure. Um, so, hopefully, we just got to keep doing it, you know, day after day. Have you ever seen that before? Guys bat around twice in an inning. No, I I've never seen each guy get two at bats in an inning that I can maybe little league. I don't I don't know. That's <laughs> like I, seriously, and I, I don't say that as like a slight. Like that's I don't I don't know if I've ever seen that happen. Um, so yeah, I mean our guys just were getting pitches to hit, um, and even pitches that you know they they still fouled them off, and and you know, just with two strikes they put them in play, and and you know they, they were making their guys work. So um, yeah, from a pitcher standpoint, that's that's all you can ask for. Oh. Oh, Zach Gallen, you are delightful. I don't know what I like there much more. The fact that he basically said he's never seen this since Little League or the fact that he wanted to get out there with a bat in his hand and hit the ball too. He's like, hey, everybody's getting hits off of Kyle Freeland. I might as well get out there and have a shot at it as well. I get that. I get that. I understand. Um, I start thinking I can hit a ball too, Zach, until I get out there and actually try. But uh, Gallen... It was light work for Gallon tonight. Of course, he did like exactly what we wanted of Gallon, but you know, uh, of course, he probably didn't have much stress on him to uh, to to did, be Derek, too did good. Did he just call the Rockies a little league team? He basically did just call the Rockies. That's a little pretty league disrespectful. Team. Yeah, it is. It's absolutely disrespectful. Uh, Tony in the chat with the super chat. I love you, Tony. He said. The mayor spoke the truth. The Korean pork belly nachos were incredible and made this night even more perfect for my dad and I. God bless you. God bless your dad. But most importantly, God bless those Korean pork belly nachos. Do you realize there were people, strangers, not listeners to this show, not diehards, not even people that were acquaintances that I've met once. No, just absolute strangers that I was just striking up conversations with in the crowd and telling them that they needed to go get the Korean pork belly nachos. I ate all of the stuff that they had to offer, and I'm still furious that I don't have two plates of Korean pork belly nachos in front of me right now. It's uh, But anyway, um, Tori thought Gallon was also very good tonight. This is what Tori had to say about Zach Gallon uh, and his performance. He got up and threw two times in in the batting cages, and I went in there one time, had a brief discussion with him, and then I had a brief discussion with him after the fourth inning, and that's tough. That's tough emotionally. The letdown, um, 
probably tough physically too. So um, he didn't he didn't let it affect him. You know the, the his stuff came out hot. He probably came out after that third inning or came out from the top of the fourth. And his stuff might have ticked down a little bit, but when he needed to, he stood on it and he got after it. That's wild. That is wild that the third inning took so long that Zach had to like go throw BP. That's crazy. And like, again, that could be why you saw Zach only have the three strikeouts tonight. Could also be the run support that he had by that point. But for the most part, what a weird night, you know? And of course, Zach will take it. You know, Zach will absolutely take it. But, you know, Tori makes a good point there. Like we we joked, I joked earlier, you did kind of feel like you were getting bored there from watching the Diamondbacks, you know, score runs and get hits for, for just a little while there in that third inning. And Zach Gallen absolutely got bored to the point where he got cold and needed to go warm back up. So uh, that was an absolute crazy, uh, crazy night for for this team. But uh, of course, I did talk earlier about Blaze Alexander and his big night. Of course, Tori, uh, that go watch that video if you want to tear up a little bit. Go watch Blaze get told. I did tear up. That he right. How it's can hard you, not how can to you not be romantic how about can baseball. You not there? be romantic about That's getting what called it's all up about. to the major leagues, right? Uh, but here's what Tori had to say about Blaze and. And his uh, debut here in Major League. First of all, you, you can't understand the emotion that everybody was carrying around today. The fans were here. It was opening day. And then it was it had to be amplified for Blaze. His heartbeat was, was probably through the roof. And I thought he carried himself really, really well. So everybody was pulling for Blaze. Everybody's, everybody's spot on with him. They feel his energy. When he got that base hit, it was a great moment inside of our dugout. It was a great moment for him, great moment for his family. And, you know, the first one is one you'll never, ever forget. He's, that's the first of many. I know it for Blaze. But um, I was just impressed with the way he handles it at, handled his at-bats. And after he got the hit, I went over and gave him a hug, said congrats. I said, how was that? How's it been? What are you thinking right now? I tried to dig in a little bit deeper than he was ready for. And he just gave me typical Blaze answers. He's like, that was awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> that's all I got out of him. I, I bet that's what you got out of him. I mean, I got to be honest, Derek, like out of as far as any debut goes, this is kind of got to be I know he said his heart's beating through his chest, but like this has got to be one of the more comfortable circumstances. Right. There's not a whole lot of pressure. Right. Everyone's hitting the crap out of the baseball like and then he just got he's just got to go up there and do what he's done all spring. Exactly. And he did. And he did. And I think that there is something to be said about him kind of progressing into, you know, uh, through that that newness through that debut, right? I mean, I don't care how many baseball games you play, even against other major league baseball players, you still have the fact that you are making your debut and you go out there and sometimes your your heart is beating through your chest, through your shirt. Sometimes you're just overthinking it entirely too much. But to be able to come out, have two hits in your debut like you did and be able to just kind of put the 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 debut part to rest and now be able to move on and progress with the season knowing you're on the major league roster and knowing that Tory believed in you enough to put you on the in the opening day starting lineup has to just do nothing but you know send his confidence through the moon right uh and i want to give a shout out to cogs uh no cogs i did not forget about your super chat uh cogs i love you for your super chat and i'm going to use the money to buy pork belly nachos. Um, Damon, can we put Cogs' super chat up there on the screen, please? Uh, Cog says the rally monkey took a rest tonight. We didn't need the rally monkey, luckily. Uh, and that's the, something we talked about, actually. Uh, we, we, in fact, I think told somebody in the diehards that like you didn't be, you weren't believing enough in this team if you thought cogs needed to bring the rally monkey tonight uh but he says blaze alexander's the rookie of the year this is my year no our year i'm giving lourdes my firstborn that's a that's enough cogs. every year is our year that's you cogs needs to calm down um right now but but every year is our year Derek. every year is our year yes that's true and every monday we go to the mailbag but uh tory did get some advice from other national league managers about how to approach the season and i think maybe he might have gotten some good advice this is what tori had to say about that yeah i think we're on the right we're on the right train um i've talked to a lot of managers um present managers a lot of past managers um about what should i what, what should i do and what can i expect as we step into spring training a lot of them helped me understand what was important through the course of camp we got there a lot of them followed up with you got to you got to start fast and be ready on day one 
I think we answered that question. You did. You absolutely did emphatically, in fact. So, um, of course, uh, all of this great information we've been discussing tonight is brought to you by our friends at Desert Financial Credit Union. And for more than 84 years, Desert Financial has been Arizona's largest, most trusted local credit union dedicated to creating exceptional experiences by giving back to its customers and the community. And obviously, I've talked about this many times, but Desert Financial got me started when I was a uh, a young, confused, non-homeowner on my home ownership journey. Uh, and I am very thankful that they did. Uh, and they could get you started as well. They can also help you out with checking and savings accounts, mortgages, loans, credit cards, investment options, and so much more. And when you open a free checking account online right now, you can get $200 in bonuses. Get started by visiting desertfinancial.com slash 200. And of course, uh, without Jesse being here, me and Damon, we're taking the boys' trip to Gila River. Is that okay? Can we do that now? Am I included yet? Fine. All right. There it is. And he has to go with someone. Uh, and, I mean, of course, you can go by yourself. You can I, do I you at Gila River. I have to go with someone. You have to go with someone because nobody does it better. They offer an authentic and immersive experience. And Damon needs somebody uh, to, you know, watch his slot machine when he goes and uses the restroom. So uh, they have an unprecedented level of entertainment and excitement that you won't find anywhere else. And like I said, they have their state-of-the-art gaming floor with over 800 slot machines 15 blackjack tables live table games and arizona's largest casino sportsbook head to gila river resorts and casino and let them show you what the next level is all about you do you at gila river resorts and casinos visit play at gila.com for more details and i am tired of being by myself and i guess you know based on me probably excluding him from the boys trip to gila river uh jesse friedman is now joining us from Chase Field, uh, and I know he has uh, a lot to discuss in regards to this big win tonight. Jesse, what the hell has gotten into these Arizona Diamondbacks? I actually don't have any comments about tonight's game. I just want to talk about uh, this trip that you and Damon are apparently taking without me now. Uh, that's that's not okay. That needs How to stop. How quickly? Th- yeah, as you see, his loyalty is to no one but Geraldo How Perdomo. How the table turns. Yeah. yeah, my loyalty is to Geraldo Perdomo and making sure I make my my trip over to Gila River Resort. That's and it. He doesn't care who he goes with, Jesse. He just wants to go, and that's what that's why he's selfish. But uh, what a night for this team! What a way to kick off the 2024 season, and honestly, what a way to build on what they did in the playoffs last year and make them believe that they are the team that was worthy of getting to the World Series. Tori said something along the lines of, I don't know if you guys have maybe played this as a clip already, but um, he said something along the lines of this being exactly what you hope for times 10 yeah. uh, in, in terms of opening day. Like, I mean, how, how, how better, like, how could this game have gone better for the Arizona Diamondbacks? I mean, I guess Zach Gallon could have thrown a no hitter or something. Uh, but yeah, I mean, a 16 to one victory over the Rockies. Uh, all kinds of franchise records being broken in this game. I'm sure you guys have already talked about the 14 runs in the third inning. That's a franchise record for a single inning. Uh, They had 13 hits in that inning. That's also a franchise record. They sent 18 men to the plate in that inning, also a franchise record. Uh, That inning was unlike anything I've ever seen and unlike anything that everyone we talked to today had ever seen. Uh, Alec Thomas said that he feels like he's always the kind of guy in those situations to get out multiple times, uh, you know, to like make two of the outs in the same inning. Uh, so he was happy, <laughs> he was happy to avoid that fate. Uh, but we talked with Gino Suarez. We talked with Zach Gallen, um, who I think you guys might've heard from, uh, already saying that he hasn't seen it other than maybe in little league. Yeah. Uh, it he was called just, the Rockies I mean, a little something- league team. Yeah, he he made sure afterward to be like, I don't mean that as a slight. Like, I'm not trying to offend anyone. Uh, but I mean, the reality is that Kyle Freeland in that third inning, I mean, he just couldn't, he just couldn't get anybody out. Yeah. And, uh, and and we actually talked with Zach Gallon after the game about how every pitcher's been in that spot before. Like, no matter how good you are, and granted, Kyle Freeland not not necessarily a, a great starting pitcher at, at this stage in his career, but every pitcher, no matter no matter how good you are guys have days where they have an inning maybe where the maybe not where the opposing team bats around twice but where the opposing team just gets hit after hit after hit and and you're just kind of stuck as a pitcher you might even be executing some pitches like I don't think Kyle Freeland made a hundred percent bad pitches in that inning uh, but it just speaks to the Diamondbacks and you know the game plan that they had going in they clearly were as well prepared uh, to have success against Kyle Freeland as you could possibly imagine 
and uh, they come away with with an enormous, uh, an emphatic 16 to one win here on opening day. We also had Lourdes Gurriel, Jesse, with his five RBI tonight, the most by D-back on opening day. And I think that we're going to talk a lot throughout the season about the contracts the Diamondbacks signed. Gino had an incredible night as well as an incredible defensive play that made us swoon over the fact that he is our third baseman. We know Alec made an incredible defensive play out there, but we know a lot of the new additions to this team are kind of going to have the discussion about the contracts they were given and their worth and their contributions like Jock and Randall guys haven't played yet. Lourdes might get lost in the shuffle, but Lourdes now might, you know, I don't like he could end up being the the best pickup, even though he was just basically a player they re-signed. But considering how likely it seemed at one point that Lourdes was in fact going to leave, leave as a free agent, it feels really yeah. good for him to be a Diamondback on opening night when he's setting a record for the most RBI in franchise history on opening night. Yeah, I mean, his his first swing of 2024 was a home run, right? He took yes. ball one, and the next pitch was a middle and slider that he did not miss. And yeah, I mean, there were times last year, I know you look at the end of season numbers for Lourdes, and you're not necessarily blown away, but there were times last year where Lourdes was basically the best hitter on this team, or, you know, one of the top two hitters on this team. Uh, you know, you think back to all the success the Diamondbacks had in the first few months of the season. A lot of it was because of him having like a 900 OPS, uh, you know, through a decent chunk of the calendar. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if we expect Lourdes to be a 900 OPS guy for over the course of a full season, but he can, he can be a really, really, really good hitter for a few weeks at a time. And last year we really saw that in May when he was a, a legitimate candidate for the National League player of the month. Uh, but maybe it comes a little earlier this year. Maybe, maybe it's April where Lourdes just absolutely goes off and, you know, maybe carries the Diamondbacks offense for a time. He had a really big day. Um, I mean, basically everyone had a really big day. Like every single Diamondback starting position player had multiple hits except for Corbin Carroll, I believe, who did yeah. not have any. Uh, so I guess we have to start the, you know, is Corbin Carroll washed conversations? Of course, that feels <laughs> that feels inevitable. Uh, uh, but him, yeah, turn him, off. turn him off, cut him off. I don't want to hear any of that today. <laughs> Just an incredibly well-rounded effort from the Diamondbacks offense. And, and that's something we talked about a lot over the offseason is just how well-rounded of a lineup it is. Uh, you know, if Geraldo Perdomo is contributing like he did today, if Alec Thomas, I, I really like what I saw from him today. He got a double, um, hit a double off Kyle Freeland, who, of course, is a lefty. Uh, his swing adjustments, it, it's a subtle thing, but you can just see him not pulling off to the first base side nearly as much as we have in the past. I mean, that might be it right there, that, that you know, that's the adjustment that he needed to make to really unlock his potential as a player um you know it's only one game but maybe maybe this is the the season where we really see alec thomas take that next step uh now the other big story today obviously was blaze alexander uh not only making his major league debut in the starting lineup but also getting multiple hits like you said everybody everybody except corbin got multiple hits uh we have your clip here from blaze in the clubhouse afterwards on on his big night this is what blaze had to say Oh, he doesn't have it. Yet. All right, um, but what what was the? <laughs> well, we'll we'll get it here in a second. But uh, what was Blaze's? Uh, what was Blaze feeling after his big big night? It, chest heart still pumping out of his uh, out of his chest. I don't know if you guys have talked at all about the moment where he thought he had walked, but it was actually ball three. I, I did uh, a little was, bit. It was a little embarrassing. You? Yeah, it was a little. Yeah, it was. It was definitely a low light of what was really <laughs> a very successful major league debut for Blaze Alexander. But from what I can tell, from what we heard in the clubhouse and what Tori said, it sounds like that perfectly encapsulates Blaze as a as a as a player and and even as a person in some ways. Uh, multiple people, I think both Tori and Alec referred to that as a blaze moment like as if that's a thing <laughs> like a blaze moment is a thing i guess a moment where blaze just like maybe has a brief mental laugh and like kind of makes a, makes wow. a fool of himself for a Does second work? Um, we are going to call anything i do on this show a blaze moment like that i think i think that needs to be a thing that we do for sure it's yeah i mean it's great it's great branding material absolutely uh <laughs> But yeah, it was funny hearing a few guys talk about that. There definitely seems to be a consensus that Blaze is just like kind of a quirky dude who occasionally like, you know, might forget how many balls or strikes there are. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's certainly a lovable guy, someone who clearly, 
clearly, you know, his teammates really seem to enjoy his company. Uh, Gino Suarez, as as he was leaving the clubhouse today, was like shouting at Blaze as we were talking with Blaze. Um, so, yeah, Blaze really seems to be fitting right in and a really, really big first day for him. How connected is that clubhouse right now, Jesse? How connected does a 16 to 1 victory make them? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's been a narrative with this team for for a while just the camaraderie inside the clubhouse and it's always a hard thing to to really get a great feel for uh, as a member of the media who's only there at very select times of the day <laughs> right. but it really right. does it really does seem genuine like i i really don't have any questions whatsoever that that's a real thing a lot of these guys came up together and uh they they all really seem to enjoy each other's company that's something that here i can use my years of experience of covering this team to say like there is something that was always kind of hidden right about their camaraderie you know you would go into the clubhouse and for the most part it was like business it was very much business because the media was there and and i understand that right i understand just yeah. the way just the way things blew up last year remember with the whole you know uh attaboy thing and all of that stuff like sometimes stuff that happens in the clubhouse that's fairly innocent can become a bigger story just because the media is present and that kind of stuff. Right. But I, I, I think that the, the, I guess the way that this team is with each other is like, it's, it's a, it's there when we're there, right? Like we're there and they're joking around to each other. They're, they're laughing, they're having a good time and they don't really seem to care that we're there witnessing it in a way, you know what I mean? And like, that's something that I feel like over the last 10 years of me covering this team, wasn't something I've seen as often as I've seen over the last year, you know? And I mean, today was a great example of that. The team was loose. They were having a good time. There was just, there. there's a lot of love being shown between teammates when it comes to the Diamondbacks. Obviously, Tori is a big, you know, is a big component to that. He is, his philosophy, is, the whole 108 culture is about this team and how connected they are, you know, as, as a group. You know, they are, they are, they are Belgian draft horses, Jesse, and they pulled the <laughs> shit out of some weight tonight as a group. And it is exactly what Tori is talking about, about how much stronger they are when they know each other and they're doing it together than when they're doing it by themselves or when they don't have that same connection. I mean, it, it is especially easy to have a good time with each other and enjoy each other's company when you're you know, just yeah. beating the tar out of the opposing <laughs> team. Yeah. That, that that definitely is a contributing factor. Uh, I do have to share one other moment from uh, from Tori's post-game press conference that I found pretty hilarious. Uh, people might be familiar with Barry Bloom, who's a, a long-time, long-time reporter who, who lives here in the Valley. What did Barry uh, been, do a hall, now? been a Hall of Fame voter for a long time. So basic, Barry was just asking Tori questions about how how unprecedented that third inning was and how amazed he was by it and how even despite all of his years of experience covering baseball uh he hadn't really seen anything like it and tory's response was absolutely amazing uh <laughs> tory in response to that he said something along the lines of wow well if we're impressing you we must be doing shit right uh, i believe i believe that's what uh, i believe that's what tory said so he said a curse <laughs> i did it was tight i was quoting wow, someone to fine. be fair we're clipping that clip that david Jesse right now did a i need bad that for my personal collection um all right well of course we we do have the video of blaze alexander talking about his night and uh you know every everything that went on with his debut in major league baseball and next at bat, you know, I know on that what was it three one whatever it was. I I thought it was ball four, and kind of kind of embarrassed myself a little bit, but made up for it with that the RBI hit up the middle. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I think it it went pretty well, man. It's a lot of emotion and uh, just happy we got the win, big win, shoot. You never forget your first MLB game, obviously, but the way this one went, I mean, just how special was it? Yeah, I mean, super special. I that. Third inning, we scored what 14 runs. <laughs> yeah. I think that's some kind of record. Franchise had, record, yeah. yeah. 13 hits in that inning, and uh, you know, it's just, I mean, it's unbelievable. We have an unbelievable group of guys, and uh, it was just cool having having their support the whole game. You know, each each pitch I would take or foul the ball off, man. I was looking at the dugout, and they're they're right up there, right on the front row, and you know, cheering me on, and then, you know, that that motivated me a lot. So, love these guys. 
Put a dollar in the jar, Jesse. I don't care. The chat says <laughs> swear jar. You have to put money in the jar. No, Blaze Man, like he Tory, Tory deserves should be the one. Yeah, no, that well, don't make Tory cover jar, that. I will bring this tomorrow <laughs> night and put this in front of his podium. But uh, and I'll say I don't like the way he's influencing you, my young ward. But uh, no, man, Blaze obviously just looks like that kind of guy. Like when you describe what his teammates are saying about him, and then you see him kind of give that explanation and kind of joke about embarrassing himself, but then making it up for it with the RBI, you know, up the middle, like you're like, yes, yes, you did. And yes, this is like, he, he just, uh, he seems like a very enjoyable young man to be around. And I think that he is going to definitely contribute quite a bit to this team this year. Yeah. Another, another thing that I thought was interesting from our conversation with blaze was, I mean, so, when he got his first career hit, it came after this sort of embarrassing moment where he thought he had walked and then he had to, you know, do the walk of shame, essentially back to the batter's box when he, when he realized that he actually had not walked. And so he talked about bouncing back from that moment of embarrassment and kind of salvaging some dignity for himself, which he absolutely did, right? Coming up with yeah. his first major yeah, league hit, did. the RBI that set the franchise record for runs scored and inning, that whole thing. And he compared it to a few days ago when we saw Blaze Alexander hit a very, very long home run oh, yeah. also in this ballpark. Oh, yeah. And he talked about how a couple pitches before he hit it, he he lost control of the bat and he he swung the bat and the the bat went I don't know if it was into the seats or uh, up against the backstop somewhere or something uh, but that's also not necessarily the the greatest thing when you're no. a hitter when no. you when you lose control of the bat it's not not necessarily a great look and he bounced back from that and hit an absolutely monstrous home run and you know he bounced back from this little moment of embarrassment and uh, you know found a way to to make history uh, for the Diamondbacks so. Uh, all the way around, yeah. Just a just a big day for Blaze, and I think Diamondbacks fans, the more they get to know him, will will just you know really appreciate who he is as a person even that much more. So many fun stories coming out of tonight, Jesse. You know, like not only is it it's opening day, it was a historic win. It's Blaze Alexander's debut. You just had a lot of success, you know, with with the multiple hit night from so many guys. It's just it's a fantastic night but we do have a brand new segment that is going to be brought to you by jesse friedman and that new segment is called numbers don't lie and on numbers don't lie we are going to be discussing a number a number every single week or every single post game i should say not week but every game uh that that's important from tonight's game tonight's number as you can tell there somewhere in there <laughs> is 14 uh 14 a very important number tonight because obviously uh, the Arizona Diamondbacks scored an his, a, a historic amount of runs, a franchise record, 14 runs there in that third inning. But like you said, Jesse, that wasn't the only historic thing they did. They they did a lot of historic things tonight. I don't know what you're talking about, Derek. I picked 14 because that's the number of out of zone fastballs that Rockies hitters God swung at it. today. God and I, that was a talking it. point. You're, I knew uh, you were going <laughs> to set me up like that, Friedman. No, I don't. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, 14 was exactly <laughs> what you said. Uh, I when I came up with the idea for this segment, I was like, Oh, what if I picked like one number, you know, deep, deep within stat cast, like something I dug out, I thought was really interesting. <laughs> I, can tell, I can explain to the people. But yeah, when you set a franchise record, it makes my job pretty easy. We, we looked uh, at each so, other. I was like, it's 14. And you're like, yeah, it's 14. It's, uh, it's 14. Yeah. That's it. How could it not be 14? Jesse, I'm shocked that, I mean, the, that the number wasn't 85.5, the uh, exit velocity of Geraldo <laughs> Perdomo's single that started off the 14 run inning. Damon's not happy with most people right now. I'm just telling you that I'm, right I'm now. Just, I just felt like that was really the most important thing that we needed to talk about tonight. Yeah, I mean, he didn't hit. He didn't hit the ball hard, Damon, and I continue to have serious doubts about her up now. Yeah, so uh, that, that was ninety point five. I mean, Jesse, it's just like at what point did we just bench this guy? Yeah, yeah, and he also hit a deep fly ball to, the, to right field, and inevitably it stopped short and only went to the warning track. Was caught by Jay Cave. So. Uh, you know, clearly Geraldo Perdomo also washed, washed alongside Corbin Carroll. 362 uh, feet, guys Jesse. in the wash Respect category. Him. Cogs uh, wants to talk <laughs> about ex Wobicon. So uh, can we get can we get started on that? I mean, can we get a number on that, Jesse? No, I can't. I can't give you a fairly nerdy stat here. If you Let's want something it. a little bit, yeah, more give it to me. Give it to me. I love um, when you talk this nerdy. One, to me. This one. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This one actually, uh, actually on the negative side. 
uh, for all the positive things happening, you know me, Derek. You know I can't have a full show that's please, all please positive. Bring, us, bring be, us back down to reality, Friedman. Has to be at least something negative. So Zach Gallen, uh, pretty pretty decent in this game. Like five innings, one run. I don't think you can really complain about that from a results standpoint, even with it being against against the Colorado Rockies. But I will say that Zach Gallen allowed a lot of hard contact in this game. Uh, yeah. He was the beneficiary of some very good Diamondbacks defense. Uh, the average very exit good. velocity against him today was 93.1 miles an hour, which is extremely high. Uh, granted, it's just one game, but that is a very, very high number for for a single game for opposing hitters to average, uh, you know, well over 90 miles an hour exit velocity. Uh, the the other number is that Rockies hitters had an expected batting average of 328 against him. So the fact that Gallon only gave up three hits in five innings, uh, you know, according to the batted ball data, he he was pretty fortunate to do that, which really just continues a trend. I mean, that was in many ways the story of, of you know, some of Zach Gallon's starts in the second half where he did get knocked around a decent amount, but he still came away with like a six inning one run outing, you know, it feels like something like that happened, happened a few times. So I thought he got away with some stuff today. He did have 15 whiffs. So from a swing and miss standpoint, there, there were some good signs there. Um, but he also, I think he only threw 33. I don't have it in front of me. I think it was 33% of his pitches were in the strike zone, which that number doesn't have to be like 60%, but 33 is pretty, is pretty low. You generally want that to be somewhere in the in the mid 40s, maybe. Um, so his command wasn't great today. He he issued a couple of walks when the D backs were up by you know 15 runs, which obviously wasn't a wasn't a great look. So I don't I don't think it was a terrible outing for Zach Gallon or anything, but um, I, I don't think he was maybe as good as his final line showed today. Uh, J A in the chat says, "There it is, Jesse's negative." I asked what it would be at the start of the show, and you <laughs> delivered. You don't let the people down sometimes, Jesse, and I'm so thankful for that. Uh, of course, now we get to watch more Diamondbacks baseball, right? We get uh, three more games in the series against the Rockies, and hopefully, they all go like this, or at least something close to this, right? But um, again. I, I tried to I tried to do your thing earlier and temper expectations because it is the Rockies. And as much as you want to get excited that they beat the tar out of a baseball team, they beat the tar out of a game, a team that lost 100 games last year. And I don't know how much how, you know, how how excited you want to be. But again, it's it's like Tori said, you can't focus on anything past the opponent today. Right. They need to focus on yeah, today's right. opponent when asked. Who his toughest opponent is, it's his next one. It's today's. And the Diamondbacks took care of business today against the Rockies. And they still have to take care of business in this series. But man, you can't you can't help but think the confidence level is through the roof right now with those guys after what they did tonight. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is th this is as good of an opening day as you as you really could have hoped for. Uh, you know, it is just one game. It doesn't mean much in the grand scheme of things, but talk about a tone setter for a season that people have really high expectations for the D backs couldn't have delivered on that any better than they did, uh, yeah. you know, through the first few innings of this game. I know you were here for the pregame ceremonies and whatnot. There was a lot of electricity in this building. It, it kind of had, it kind of had a world series esque feel to me in, in, you know, at least the pregame portion, the applause and the cheers for a lot of the Diamondbacks starting position players. I feel like that. I feel like those cheers were basically as loud as we heard them in the playoffs. This team has clearly endeared yeah. themselves to the community and, uh, and rightfully so. And the D backs came and they showed up and everyone who came here, you know, hoping for a little bit more magic from that postseason run. That's exactly what they got. Um, up until like the fourth inning when this game caught kind of boring because the Diamondbacks that were up by so much that I, there I wasn't really both, much to both, cheer about the yeah, rest both of the way. just but. wanted it to be over. The fans just wanted it to be over at that point. Yeah. Like everybody was <laughs> like, this is, this game's a wrap. Right. But I knew things, Jesse, were going to be electric when we came out to the baseball field and we saw Gabriel Moreno dancing to this song. Damon, you want to throw that video up there one more time? <laughs> Oh, you know, you know, have it in there. All right, uh, we'll get that up there. Shoot, I, I thought, I thought, I thought we were gonna throw it back to Gabby, but um, of course, yeah, like you said, the the atmosphere was electric. Everything was fantastic, uh, and here's Gabby now doing the thing to this song. Uh, 
Uh, I knew it was going to be a banner day once we saw that, Jesse. Uh, of course, uh, we'll be back out there tomorrow uh, for some more baseball, right? Um, who we got on the mound for, for Colorado in game two? New Cal Quantrill? Yes, I believe it is Cal Quantrill against, of course, Merrill Kelly on the Diamondback side. Um, speaking about guys on the mound, I believe Bob Nightingale tweeted out a few hours ago that Jordan Montgomery will be introduced at a press conference tomorrow at some point. Let's so, go. Uh, we might we might have uh, we might have some more content coming. I don't know if that'll be in the morning or the afternoon uh, or what it will be. Um, but yeah, it should be. I mean, tomorrow is going to be a really big day. If, you know, people came out today, or you know, even if you didn't come out today, tomorrow should be a really great game to go to. You're going to get the the ring ceremony before the game. You're going to get right. Evan Longoria. Uh, throwing out the ceremonial first pitch, which I think will be a, a really special moment. And who knows, maybe Jordan Montgomery will, uh, maybe, maybe Jordan Montgomery will be hanging around the ballpark as well. Uh, I don't, maybe they'd show him on the screen or something once the move was, was made official. So that could be uh that could be a pretty cool moment too. It was great to see uh, like Paul Seawald and all the guys that are in on the injured list still out there. Yeah, tonight. great. Dre Jameson. Dre Jameson, Jameson was introduced. Who will not, to, he's yeah. not going to play a single inning this year of baseball. And this man was out there running out to the line. And you just got to love that. You got to love that about these guys. But of course, uh, do we have the rest of the probables for this series? Uh, Damon, there's the rest of them. Uh, again, things look pretty good for the Diamondbacks. And based on the information we heard today, Jesse, it doesn't sound like we're going to be without Erod for very long. And it doesn't sound like we're going to be yeah. without Jordan Montgomery for for too long. Like, obviously, we know he's got to ramp up and and probably make some starts there in Reno, probably, so that he can get some live action under his belt. But uh, this... With the way this offense was swinging the bat tonight and the way that this starting rotation is going to come together this season, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know how you can't be romantic about Diamondbacks baseball. I think there's a, there's a decent chance that three weeks from now, the Diamondbacks will have the full starting rotation together. That Jordan Montgomery will be ready to go. Eduardo Rodriguez, if he is able to throw off a mound in five to seven days, like Tori suggested today. If that does come to pass, then I don't think he's going to need to build up a ton because he was already built up to I think around five innings. Um, so, it, you know, if he's able to get back and, and pitches, throwing, right, he was up to about 75. I think he was. Yeah, I think he was in that range. So if he's able to get back that quickly, the buildup isn't going to be nearly as long. He's not going to have to like go back to throwing one or two innings and then gradually go up from there. So, yeah, I think three weeks from right now, I, I think it is very possible that Jordan Montgomery and Eduardo Rodriguez are ready to go. And the Diamondbacks at that point have a pretty, pretty darn good starting rotation. Uh, Jesse, on the pregame show, you talked about how opening day and and you even said it a little while ago, the, it's a tone setter when you have a game like this, but opening day can really yeah. kind of be like a small example of how the season is going to go. If that's the case for 2024, I can't wait to watch this movie play out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. I mean, there, there was, there was something about the diamondbacks just, just commanding, this baseball game from start to finish right i mean yeah. florida scurriel jr hits that home run in the bottom of the first inning yep. uh it's it's quickly two nothing diamondbacks i know the rockies came back smacked a couple doubles the next inning made it two to one uh things were a little more interesting at that point but then they did what they did in the third inning and suddenly you know the d-backs are up 16 to one and and yes it's the colorado rockies it's one game all of those things are absolutely true but you can't help but watch this game and at least wonder if if this if this seems a little different this year right if if this could be a team that isn't you know trying to claw out one run wins two run wins those kind of things like we yeah. saw a lot of last year like 16 to 1 i don't i don't care who you're playing you know that that says at least something about who you who you are as a baseball team the d-backs are still going to have to prove who they are uh you know for in in the coming months but Today was, as we said earlier, today was as good of a start as you possibly could have imagined. Completely agree with you. And like you also said, tomorrow night is almost as good as opening day in a way because you have the ring ceremony, you have Longo throwing out the first pitch. It's very much going to have the same atmosphere, I think. And, I mean, 
might might have just as many people tomorrow night after tonight's big win. Uh, so make sure to get out to the ballpark. Of course, a great way to get your tickets for that game and for any game is through Game Time. Game Time is the place for last minute ticket deals, and it's the fastest growing ticketing app in the country for a reason. No matter if you want to go to a Diamondbacks game, a concert, a show, anything in town, Game Time has you covered, especially when you get that last minute FOMO. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the app, create an account, and use code PHNX for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account and redeem code PHNX for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And also a great place to fill up on your way to the game is at Circle K, because not only is there Circle K by you, but you know there's one on the way to Chase Field. Circle K will save you on some gas. You can also take those bottles of unopened water into the stadium and save yourself some money as well. But if you sign up right now for the Inner Circle program for free by downloading the Circle K app today, you can save 25 cents off per gallon on your first five Phillips, save three cents off per gallon every day after that. You also get a wide variety of coupons in the app. Terms and conditions apply at participating locations. Visit circlek.com for details. And that's all we got for you. We will be back out at Chase Field bright and early tomorrow or kind of in the afternoon. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm, I'm, I, I've been up since 530, so I'm, I'm actually impressed that I'm not asleep right now in this chair. But, uh, of course, we cannot wait for more Diamondbacks baseball. So we will see all of you guys out there at the yard. In the meantime, you can follow us on Twitter. I am at cap underscore caveman with a K. Jesse is at Jesse and Friedman. Of course, the people's producer, Damon, he's at Damon Dog. That's D A W G. And we are Damon's dogs. Bark, bark. Bark, bark. There we go. Well, we're just, we need to be in the same boat after that. After 16 runs, I can't get an emphatic bark, bark. Bark, bark. I mean, I mean, for the love of God, when can I get one? I don't know. I, Jesse, well, I don't know, Jesse Damon. You you were talking earlier about me no longer being invited on 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 a certain trip, and I thought we forget. had something going. He doesn't forget. I thought Damon. we had something going, and apparently we no, don't. So. No, so he, and I don't forget are, the things he says about Geraldo Perdomo. You're building it back up. Yeah, there's a lot of I animosity don't. here. And I, never I don't will. know who started it, but we need to get past it, you guys. <laughs> we need to really figure out uh, how we can be connected once again. Because remember, a connected team is a fucking dangerous team. I don't feel very dangerous right now. I don't. I don't think you guys look very dangerous right now. You're looking a little. <laughs> You're looking a little innocent, in fact, but I look uh, I look very orange. Uh, you look very in, orange. In very orange. The, the, very li- orange. the lighting the lighting bad. is not immaculate. I'm looking I'm looking dark, damn it. New I music. appreciate it. It's that new music. Got that that <laughs> island is. that it's island really, tan on you, Derek. Really feeling the Latin vibe. Uh, I need a pina colada <laughs> right after this immediately. But of course, uh, we do thank you guys for being here uh, in uh, in the PHNX Sports YouTube channel. If you're a diehard already, we thank you for being a diehard. If you're not one. We would love it for you to try us out. We implore you to check it out. It pays for itself. You get a free t-shirt from the phnxlocker.com. Speaking of free t-shirts. And speaking of free t-shirts, we got some pretty good new ones. Look at these brand new babies. We got the Defend the Pool, which we are going to be doing all season long. Uh, thanks to our guy, Jake. He got us He got us, you know, realizing that we really need to defend that pool. And then our Sunday Fun Day shirt. You can get either of these shirts as your free shirt from the phnxlocker.com. I love that Sunday fun day shirt. I can't wait till it arrives. Uh, I ordered one right away. So make sure you do the same. Of course, if you join us as a diehard, you can get one of those shirts or any shirt of your choosing for free over at the phnxlocker.com. You also get all of our exclusive content for diehards. Uh, You get access to Jesse's written pieces. You get access to this special stuff we do for you guys over on the Discord. And of course, you also get access to discounts on our events like our upcoming pool party at Chase Field on July 31st. So make sure to join us for all of that fun. Uh, In the meantime, you can also make sure to follow our account at phnx underscore dbacks. But all roads do lead to at PHNX underscore sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We thank you guys so much for being Arizona Diamondbacks fans. And we thank you even more for being here tonight for our first postgame show of the year. We look forward to seeing you guys all back here tomorrow night for another postgame show. Uh, We hope you have a wonderful evening. We appreciate your time. And remember, kids, baseball is fun, but it is so much more fun when you experience a blaze moment. We all silly like the mayor.